Greetings one and all, it is I, the Family Car Guy. I apologize, because it has been forever since I have made a video. It's been a crazy last couple of weeks, couple of months, it feels like even, uh, with family stuff and work stuff, um, and traveling and things like that. So it's gonna be back, it's gonna be back on the channel. I am, hopefully, we're gonna be able to string together a nice weekly run of these, because there's plenty of things to talk about. Uh, so today I want to talk about, I want to jump right into uh, one of the things I really want to talk about, which is we are going to start the C4 build. Not a real crazy build, but there's a lot of things that need to be done to this car to get it to where it needs to be, to get it track ready. Uh, my goal was to get that done this summer, unfortunately, based on my schedule and a lot of things that have been going on. In family life, I have not been able to do that, but we are going to push on and get ready uh, to get on the track in the spring. So there's tons of things that I could talk about, but we're going to focus on just a few things today, mainly the start of the build. And there are two things we are going to start with. And the first one I'm going to show you right now. That is this bad boy right here. Yeah. So we have a DeWitt all aluminum direct fit radiator. As most people know that own a C4 Corvette, it's a common problem that these cars tend to run hot. Um, and the older they get, the worse it seems to get. And my car is absolutely no different. Um, my car definitely does run hot. It's been running hot basically since the day I bought it. Um, does great if you're on the open road, but if you get caught in rush hour traffic, that temperature gauge is going to be climbing pretty quick. And also, um, in terms of getting prepared for the track, when you're running at higher speeds for a long period of time, you still run into this same problem. Um, so it was only a matter of time before it was necessary and, and basically critical to get this done. So I went ahead and uh, ordered this radiator. So we're gonna go ahead and get it installed uh, soon. I have my mechanic going to install it. Uh, I am not super, super handy. I try to do some DIY stuff, but I'm not gonna try to attempt things that I think I'm gonna screw up uh, because not only does that make me frustrated, but it also takes away from time with the family and being the family car guy, we always gotta uh, make sure that the family is also a priority. The second thing, that I wanted to talk to you guys about and show you as well today is this. And I don't know if you guys all can even see this really well, but anyway, what it is, real cheap, simple part, but it is a brake bias spring. And the tension on this spring is much more, is, is much higher than on the standard uh, spring, which goes in your brake master cylinder. But effectively what it, what it does is it evens out the braking. So as most people know that are, are into cars, and if you're not into cars, maybe you still know this, but most of the braking, up to 80%, maybe in some cases even 90% of the braking, depending upon the car that we're talking about, is done by the uh, front brake rotors, right? And so what you end up getting in a, um, in a panic stop or an aggressive braking situation is you get a lot of nose dive. You can imagine on a racetrack how that doesn't really help you too much in the corners. You lose a lot of speed, um, you know, in terms of the handling of the car as you're bringing the car down from high speeds, the stability of the car, those types of things. Uh, you don't want to see that, you know, nose dive doesn't really help you. So this evens out the braking a little bit more. It's still going to be more towards the front, but it'll be somewhere in the neighborhood of like 60, 40 front to rear, rather than like an 80, 20 spread um, with the standard spring. So this is like, I don't even remember how much I paid for this. I think it was like 12 bucks or something like that. But um, the goal is to um, get this tried out and uh, get it installed and, and see how she does. And I'll make a video on both the uh, radiator uh, and my experience with that, how, how the car gets cooled better. And also with this, uh, break by a spring after they get installed. So I'm really looking forward to to both of those things. And obviously the, the car really also needs a brake job as well. Um, I'm debating whether I'm interested in doing 
Um, the C5 brake upgrade, which I already have the uh, Grand Sport wheels and tires. If you have not seen, or the replica wheels, I should say, if you have not seen my video on the Grand Sport replica wheels and my opinion of, of them, uh, please go back and, and, and look at that in my, uh, in my video timeline. Or um, and the other thing I was going to say, if you have not already subscribed, please do so. Uh, like I said, we are planning on putting a ton more content on the channel. A lot of cool things starting up. I am in Minnesota, which means we will have to be a little bit more creative in the wintertime because we will not be driving these in the snow. However, there are a lot of cool updates that I would like to share with you guys. And as we all know, there's a lot of activity in the Corvette community uh, with things like the C8 and, and all the developments with that that are on the horizon and all the rumors that surround that. So I want to obviously talk about that as well. Um, also, I wanted to say real quickly, uh, give a big shout out to Chuck at Corvettes918 for anybody who has not uh, seen his YouTube channel. It's a fantastic channel. Unfortunately for us, the, the YouTube community and the Corvette community at large, uh, he is basically moving on and doing some other things uh, personally um, that you know, was a great opportunity for him. He didn't really elaborate in the video, um, but I can totally empathize and understand. Um, and so he had a 2019 ZR1. He also had, prior to that, a, a Z06, a C7 Z06, and his wife actually um, had a, a C7 Grand Sport, and all three of those cars were absolutely beautiful. Uh, great footage, great coverage, great reviews of, of those of those cars and, and many others that he had the opportunity to uh, review and, and talk about and, and give tips and, and um, do great content with car shows and things like that and, and, and just meeting all different kinds of people in the Corvette community. So big loss for our community, um, but great for him. So he has sold his Corvettes, uh, him and his wife. And they are shutting down their channel and their social media, which, again, is a big loss for us. But I just wanted to say thank you, Chuck. Even for a channel as small as mine, you've reached me up here in Minnesota. So I just want to say thank you. Anybody who has not seen that channel, please go out and uh, check it out. I'll put um, a link to his channel in the in uh, the description below of this video. So that is pretty much going to do it for this video. Um like I said before, please uh, like, please leave a comment, please subscribe if you if you have not done so. I would love for you to be a part of the community. Uh, we're really excited to have you. And by when I say we, yes, I will be adding more content, uh, family content. Meaning, I am the family car guy. I don't think there's been too much footage of my family on here, and that's a lot of that is intentional. But um, definitely want to get. Uh, the family involved as well, and uh, there'll be great updates coming for you guys in the next couple of weeks. So uh, stay tuned. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, be blessed. Peace out.